to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV, Upper Mississippi River Valley, and we have been running a bunch of bales off camera here. We're not quite uh, caught up with the baler. Baler's on its last run there down to the uh, end of the field, and I've got uh, probably two more trailers of bales to pull off of that field. Uh, but it's working out great. We're making good progress and it has allowed us to uh, Start getting caught up again on feeding our animals. We just uh, bumped into the harvest store there just a little bit unfortunately But we are nearly caught up on our feed situation So let's go ahead and get these unloading real quick and take a quick look. You can see we've got 876 cubic yards of uh, grass and almost the same of silage already processing through to go with our thousand cubic yards here of hay. So we're gonna be caught up uh, in no time. We're cranking through the TMR. And as you can see, our uh, barn B is almost full of feed. Our barn C is almost full of feed. And barn A, uh, about half full here still, but we'll switch the driver over here shortly uh, to start feeding the other barn. I just wanted to let it take the opportunity to fill up the barn that it was working on right now while we've been running around and doing all of these odd jobs. I have not yet jumped back over and checked on our planters so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pull this guy around real quick get him out of the way of our feed cart and we'll check in on our two slurry semis here this one should be uh, starting to get full of digestate we're making some pretty good progress there unloading the production point and if we just check here I should have enough capacity to drop off the rest of this, which means we need to go get another load. Looks like it's the barn C right here, this little barn uh, that's in the biggest need. So what we're gonna do is just swing this around and we'll go right through the farmyard by the harvest stores here and see if I can make this super tight corner into the barn. Actually, what we can do is circle around the outside of the farm all here while it's loading up and that'll give me a straighter shot into this gate i think that's going to work out just a little bit easier here uh, i have to say we have optimized a few things with the feeding scenario in the previous episode and that has really set us off on the path to success here we're slowly but surely getting everything uh, optimized for how large the farm has gotten here uh, over the last couple of years. We've been sort of struggling through a little bit uh, for the last uh, seasons, but now it's time to really uh, double down and figure out how we can uh, go about getting um, our farm ready to run fully automatic and maybe we'll even buy some more land this year if we can manage to pull that off however i think we've got most of the uh, bga stuff taken care of i'm going to uh take this truck up here it's funny is i was running bales off camera here and the truck tires were not doing this until just uh, a few moments before I started the recording. So I, I don't know. I'm going to keep mentioning it until I figure it out. But uh, very unfortunate that that's happening. And uh, I don't know why. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. We were running for, man, must have been a half an hour uh, off camera before we even got to a point where I started the recording here. And out of the blue now. We've got to deal with these graphical issues. Ah, uh, well, it happens. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to get one more load of bales here, and then I'm going to go check in on our planters real quick before we get started on uh, uh, revamping our BGA experience over there by the farm. We need to uh, really change that up to support multiple uh, slurry spreaders here and kind of keep the farm moving. I have upgraded the BGA so that it processes materials a lot faster, uh, but I just want to lay that whole area out better so that we can get stuff in and out of the BGA easier. 
So we're at 34 bales, and I've got just one pass left here. I'm going to try and sneak around this equipment without crashing into it. We'll nab these bales right out of the back of the baler. And I should have just enough space to pick up the rest of these bales along the way back here. I'm going to be upset if we have one bale left hanging out after we're done with this, but I think it's going to be perfect as long as I didn't miss any bales on the headland up here. We should come in at a perfect 42 bales on this trailer, which is epic. Uh, not very often that you can say you got the perfect amount of bales off of a field for the size of uh, trailers you've got. No wasted trips here. I'm digging it. We'll put this thing into uh, transport mode so that I can pull right up onto the farm here and we'll get these unloaded. Man, I'm excited. There's a, another big job that in the past has taken quite a bit of time to do some of these jobs, but we're really starting to get things down and optimized on the farm here. Um, ideally, at some point, we'd love to uh, get a uh, different setup so I don't have to even drive the bale trailer, but we'll get that figured out at some point in the future. And it looks like our workers have just gotten their tanks emptied uh, unexpectedly. That must be our planters because I don't have anything else uh, currently uh, in the works. The feed mixer driver is a little bit impatient there. That's all right. We're going to pull this right on up here. Should be good enough to get it out of the way. Something like that. And I just wanted to check in on this semi one more time here. Make sure that we're keeping that digestate flowing. And then this one we can send back up to the farm. Just want to double check what uh, path it's trying to get on here. Looks like it's going to try and turn all the way back in. Do we have the space? We do not. That's all right. We'll get it sorted real quick. There, let's try that. Now, I'm almost certain that these drivers are going to be out of seed. So what we're going to do is drive on out here with the seed tender and try and help them out. Um, we started on headland passes with these two planters, and they're already in the middle of the field, which means we've been working on up-down rows. And it looks like the A started on this end of the field for the up-down rows. So we are driving across planted crops here, unfortunately, but it is what it is. We're going to start off in the third hopper for seed. So get that all set up. And then if I pull up on alongside here, I can get things lined up and then hop out and get the covers off. There's that covers. And as long as I'm out on foot, I'm going to run over here and we're going to grab the other truck, the other truck, the other uh, planter and get the covers off over there. That way I can fill them both up without getting out of the semi here. And that should make life just a smidge easier on me. And I did a perfect job of getting that lined up when we were pulling in. I love it. And then next hopper. I'm beginning to wonder if we're going to have enough seed to get this whole field done. We should. We should have enough. We'll find out, though. It might be close. But we're going to just uh, run this semi over here and top them both off. I forgot to look and see how full the uh, liquid fertilizer was in the backs of these uh, planters, or I guess in the front tanks, technically. We'll have to check that when we're starting them off here. There we go. Oh, I have to stay in it to fill. That's right. Or no, the engine just has to be running. That's what it is. So let's come in here. We'll fire this off. We've got 32%, so about half of the uh, liquid fertilizer we started with, because I think it was 60-something percent that we started off with. And I'm going to go ahead and tell this guy to get started. And we'll pull this semi around. There we go. Not exactly the out of the way spot that I 
need to leave it in, but let's get the covers closed here. Back up just a couple feet and start this one off too. And then I'll take the semi down to the headland here. Just so I'm not leaving him in an awkward spot that's in the way somewhere. We got about two and a half hoppers of seed here, maybe a little bit less, which should be enough. It should be enough to top these two off one more time if they do get empty. I think they will get empty, although we did the whole headlands in a good third of the field. So I do think they'll empty out one more time before we're done, but we should have plenty in the semi to finish this up is my general thought. I'm loving it. We're almost done with the planting season. It's been a long planting season. Normally we don't spend uh, quite this many episodes in the uh, spring. So there you go. So next up, I want to resolve this issue where I can't uh, set up a course to drive around the side of this BGA and uh, fill up the digestate with our either semi-trailers or the slurry spreader itself. And so what I'm doing, I'm moving these trucks out of the way. This one's full of digestate and the other one is full of slurry. I don't want to put any more material into this BGA because I do think I'm going to end up removing this one from the map. And uh, we're really, we're going to just move it down there where I've got a little bit more room. Uh, so before we do that, I don't want to destroy this one. It's, yeah, it's pretty full of slurry. So we might have to pass a day to let this all process out. We've got just a little bit of digestate in there. We're about to have uh, uh, quite a bit more. So we might as well top off as many things as we can. So I've got this slurry spreader. And maybe what we'll do is we'll buy uh, the two more slurry spreaders. I think I'm going to go for three. Uh, one has been awesome, but we doubled up the size of the farm and I was thinking about getting a second one before I doubled the size of the farm. So I think three slurry spreaders is going to uh, be a good amount. It'll let us set one off in, you know, multiple fields and have them come through here and hopefully not get too backed up as they go through. Looks like I'm running the clock a little bit faster than normal right now too, so we're gonna enter the dark, which is not a problem. We need it to get dark anyway. Uh, I think I have to back in. I think the fill point is actually this thing on the back of the slurry tank. That's why we always fill from the back when we're driving the semi-tanker up here. So let me get some lights on so I don't run out of light while we're doing this. And the wonderful thing about using an articulated tractor for this is that we do get the option to really crank it over and uh, get into a tight spot if we need to. So something like that ought to work. There we go. Now we're filling. And I just want to get this thing to 100%, which didn't take but a second. I'll pull it over here out of the way. Um, I'll just put it right over here, I think. Not a big deal. We are going to have to move some stuff around uh, to adjust our auto drive course, get this stuff out of the way. But while that's processing, I don't actually have to wait for that to process to put the new one down. So I'm going to come over here and stand in this driveway. I should be nice and out of the way. And we're going to go into the construction menu. And I think this thing is a factory. So let's go into the factories menu. I'm trying to remember where it's at. There it is. This is the biogas plant we've got. It's 365,000, which isn't a lot uh, given our current financial situation. Let me come in and look at um, snapping. Am I? Yeah, I'm gonna use snapping so that I can kind of get it lined up here to the grid. And we've got this road that already comes through here right now. What I'm thinking is if I line this up like here, we've got this driveway that I could uh, bring something straight in and then a loop around and go back out and exit. So if we do something like this, because I don't need to back into this thing ever. We're, we're using the pump for like everything. Um, Man, I really think right here is going to be a perfect spot for it. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to that. And let's see how it looks. This is all lined up. I've got all this space here. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot of space to wrap around. And I've got a good 
path to drive through here with the semis. Yeah, I think we're going to be good here, folks. So let's go ahead and grab this first semi. I know I don't like doing a lot of stuff in the dark, but it's not that dark yet. Hopefully we can make our way through. I'm going to turn on my auto drive course. And this farm BGA slurry point is uh, no longer necessary. So we're going to get up here to this point and I'm going to hit selected target and I'm going to delete it. Nope, that didn't do anything. All right, let's well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete that point and then we're just going to recreate a point like that. That should do what we're looking for. And we're pulling through here. The one thing that we're missing now, so all of that is bad road that I'm going to have to figure out how to get rid of. But I need is a course that comes in something about like this. And then that should wrap in like so. Right through here. Um, I don't need this harvest store fill point anymore. That one's obsolete. And then what I want to do is I think set it up to be this point here going to be the farm BGA. So if I do this, I do farm dash BGA slurry. That way I know that's where the slurry goes. And man, I really thought I could uh, edit this and then just uh, delete it. But see, it's trying to do field of 23 as opposed to, I wonder if I change this to be New harvest store fill and then edit it. Let's say delete. Ah, that works. Okay. We got it. And then over here, I don't like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of some of these points real quick. And what's the button? Is it control? Left control left shift. Delete, no, left alt. Oops. Left alt, left alt. There we go, I figured out how to bring it back. And we're left alting to get rid of all of those. And my intent is to bring this over to that. Now, I don't, that looks a little steep. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring this forward. I'm gonna get rid of this. And then we're gonna bring this in at a bit more of a curve. So I think there's a good chance that we're going to come into this and go straight through sometimes uh, into the farm to go get more slurry. So I'm just going to move these around a little bit. And then this should be shallow enough that if we need to go back the other way, we can. I think we're all good to go now. Uh, so what happens if I say I want to fill at Farm Slurry and I want to drop it off at the BGA? Go. Time to test, folks. Oh, we're already full of slurry. I forgot to empty out while we were going through there. Oh, well, I guess now we'll see if it can actually handle this sharper curve. It looks like it's doing it just fine. Unfortunately, our lights just went uh, kaput. It's tight, but we made it. All right, time to see if it uh, can handle this next tighter curve. I guess I could always uh, get rid of this turn in and have it go all the way down to the other entrance if it becomes a problem, but I think we'll be okay. We might go into the ditch just a little bit here, but we're making the curve, so that's a bonus. Good. And as long as the trailer gets kind of uh, back over here to the side enough before I hit this point, yeah, that's what I was worried about. Not quite doing it for us. Uh, I'm going to hit that and hit that. Oh, we were doing it. I just wasn't paying attention. It was emptying. It was good. All right, well, we're going to be even better now, so I'll let that go. And this is obviously going to work just fine. Come across to go into the cow yard. We're good to go, folks. Uh, so with that, let's move the time forward here and get ourselves back into some daylight. I'm gonna just put this on a thousand X.
I'm gonna come in here and double check that uh, this one's getting emptied out. We're looking good. Our cows are fine for moving the time forward. Nothing crazy. I always gotta check. Sometimes I forget. And uh, we got hung up on the ground, which doesn't usually happen here, but it's because we're already full. Normally we come through here when we're empty, I think. So I'm gonna turn this off. I actually wanna pull forward into the other one to unload. And we're gonna stop time because we have a daylight now. So there we are, reloading. And I'm gonna let this guy fill and we'll send him back on his way. Just check in here on our planters. It looks like we're covering lots of acres and we've still got a decent amount of liquid fertilizer in those tanks. The 8RX is a little bit lower on the liquid fertilizer, but we're still in a really good spot. So I'm hopeful we'll make it to the end. If not, we've got a little bit sitting in the nurse trailer out here that we can top him off with. So we're in a good spot. Meanwhile, it looks like we've got a ton of TMR uh, built up now. A good amount of silage uh, from all that grass. Uh, but we do have what we're going to have. We're out of hay uh, after this. Uh, so the next cutting of our grass we're going to do, we have to get some more hay out of at least some of those fields uh, because we're going to start running low. Although we will have hay left over and no silage left over when we're actually all done making this. So we'll see how this goes over the course of the uh, next bit here. I suppose uh, since we're done with that, I can deactivate the haylage. No sense of wasting the couple of dollars there. And uh, yeah, I thought that this might be emptier. It looks like we're going to need about one more day to finish emptying out uh, this building. That's okay. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on? This was our big project for the day. I think what I need to do is uh, go make sure that that semi can get over here and fill into the VGA from where it's at without any interaction. That's kind of the last part of automating that process uh, to some degree. So he should be done filling by now. Didn't have that much capacity, so if I just hit the button, we'll see how he does. All right, so we're going to pull right over here, top this planter off, and I think the ADAR has just wrapped up, so we should be able to call this a finally a wrap on the planting season trying to eyeball getting this thing lined up but i've got to be over in the truck anyway to get it up and running here if i pull this forward i'm not quite oh i i don't have the right hopper that's the problem all right well you know what we're gonna scoot over just a little bit with the semi here see if i can Get a line just a smidge better. Really would have thought that'd do it. Am I still not aligned? It's hard to tell sometimes. We'll just do it like this. All right, that hopper's empty. We're going to go into the second to last hopper now. All right, well, that one's good to go. We'll just leave that running so I can pull the ADAR under here. And I'm going to send this guy back up to the farm. Oh my goodness, we've run into some kind of issue with the planter here. Farm yard go. Can I squeeze by on this side? Realistically, probably not, but we're going to give it a go anyway. Oh my goodness, this frame rate thing is a, a real problem. We might have to wrap things up a little bit early if I can't sort this out. And here we are. We're going to just uh, roll this thing right up under here. Hopefully we can get it topped off. No, it looks like I am going to have to get out. Oh, I'd love to be able to get out. Er, er, er. All right, we're going to jump over here and see if I can find the fill point. There it is. I'm just ho I was hoping that we were going to finish off that uh, hopper, but not quite. So we got to little more than a single hopper of seed left over here, unfortunately. It is what it is. We'll see if we can think, find a way to get rid of that seed out of this thing uh, at some point before we need to use it again. Because I'm sure we're going to have a lot of lime that needs to get spread at the end of the season here. 
and we're gonna go ahead and maybe just put this liquid fertilizer into these tanks because that would allow me to um, use this trailer for herbicide in a uh, little bit here. We're gonna have to start doing some spraying on some of our fields, so I'm just gonna come up here and dump what little left I've got. I like it. And one more vehicle for the farmyard. We're gonna have a whole train of them sitting up there by the time we can get up and manage all of that. That's all right. And last but not least, the 8R needs to get up there as well. We're doing a lot of driving around on the edge of the field here. Not exactly happy about that. Got to try and uh, stay on the grass a little bit more in the future. Here we go. All right, off to the farmyard. Well, our 8RX has already made it up there. Well, as long as we're talking about equipment that needs to get back up to the farm, we should probably grab these pieces. I should have by now put a auto drive course around the outside of this field. Um, we haven't quite gotten to that point yet. So we'll get these guys brought up to the farmyard too. All right, we've got all the equipment starting to stack up here in a line. We should probably start moving it as fast as we can so that the rest of it has a chance to get in here. Uh, the planter is going to go all the way around to uh, the cold storage we've got back there by the dairy uh, slurry pits. So we'll just bring it right through this field. Should it be easy, easy? I don't know if I'm going to have room to put uh, both planters back there now or not. We probably should. I've got that big piece of tillage equipment in there, though. Uh, that might finally need to start finding its uh, parking spot out in the, the elements somewhere. We've been storing it inside just because uh, we conveniently had enough space to do so up until now. But as we start to stockpile more equipment here... That's no longer an option. We really cut that wrong. Uh, can I grab this thing without grabbing the door? I can't. We're going to have to actually figure out how to get out of our predicament without cheating here. The problem is that we've clipped our equipment all the way inside the door. So no matter what I do, there we go. We were binding up on it. The camera angles and stuff when you're trying to be in sheds in this game is uh, a little much sometimes. It's really hard to navigate around, I find. That's all right. We'll put it right there. And uh, look at all this equipment uh, stacked up here. So let's find the next driver. Move them ahead. It's just a uh, matter of finding somewhere to park all these different uh, pieces of equipment. So I think for the semi, I obviously have our semi-trailer parking area here works out pretty well so we're gonna put it right over next to the rest of these boom just like that and next things next is gonna be the pickup with the nurse trailer i think i'm gonna uh, pull this just off onto the grass over here for the moment so where I want to park this is behind our entire line of other equipment. So we've got to continue to get this all out of the way. Now the baler can come down here next to our mowing and foraging equipment. That'll be a pretty easy delivery. Uh, I'm not sure we have space in the shed for it anymore though. Yeah, we've got the mowers and the forage harvesters in there now. I guess what I can do is we'll just back it up here alongside the bale storage like so that'll work for now at least gotta leave ourselves some room because i think i've got to put that uh windrower over there as well we'll take the shortcut i'm gonna squeeze through the uh barn here if i can i think we're not so tall I'm going to have to get a uh, pressure washer or something here at some point again. Clean up some of our equipment. It's getting a uh, mite dirty. That's all right. All in a uh, hard season's work here. We've put a, a lot of hours on all of this equipment over the last uh, several weeks. Let's see if I can just back this straight in here. Something like that ought to work out pretty well. 
And then what, last but not least, our 8R implanter here. So that's going to go in the same shed as the 8RX. See if we can fire this up. This is one of our faster tractors. Works really well. Um, I like how fast it is. These saddle tanks, though, didn't work out so hot. I, I'm not a fan of not being able to get in and out of the tractor. I do a lot of hopping in and out to do different things, and it's been a bit of a hindrance here. And that was really unexpected. Well, I shouldn't say unexpected. Me crashing into something has got to be expected at this point, but... Uh, I wasn't uh, ready for it, that's for sure. Definitely glad sometimes there is no uh, collision damage in this game. Alright, and here we are. We're going to just park this thing right smack in the middle. Good deal. Alright, I'm excited. We've got all of our planting done, all of our equipment brought back up to the farmyard and more or less put back into storage and out of the way. So let me uh, let me get this guy moving here real quick. He's full up out of this slurry pit, which means it's empty. So that's an opportunity for me to come over to this one and start emptying it manually. And we're done with bales. So this trailer can get parked over on the grass again. Man, we have made so much progress this episode. I think the last thing that I want to do is uh, try and get our... Um, slurry spreaders running automatically through that new BGA. So I'm going to park this and we'll go get that auto drive course set up. So with all of our equipment put away, it's finally time to do a little bit of landscaping here and then we will get out uh, our tractors and try and make an auto drive course here. Get that all cleaned up. Um, I'm trying to remember where this is at. There we go. Landscaping menu. Uh, we did end up buying another uh, tank to hook up to our 9RX. We're going to play around with that. Uh, like I said in the beginning of this episode, I think well, this whole goal for uh, everything that we're doing here is to hopefully automate this whole process. So we're going to be uh, making this so that when we come in through this driveway, we can come straight along this path and refill right here at the BGA side entrance. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this uh, white concretey looking stuff. I guess it's more of a white gravel, I think. And we're going to widen this out a bit. And I'm trying to get a feel for how big this is. This would be about the right width to drive a tractor around on. I want to clean out most of the grass here around these tanks, I think. We'll come back and maybe try to make it look prettier after we get it functional. And I think I'm going to give myself some room here. We are going to have uh, the semi and two tractors and stuff that need to be parked and whatnot. So what I think I'm going to do is clean out all of this grass area that's here. And we'll have ourselves a little bit of a, a open yard area where we can park tractors and such. And then I'm going to have this come down and around. I'm trying to keep it kind of straight here. A little bit of noise along the edge is okay, though. And then down here, this driveway was always just a smidge narrow. I can widen this out. And like I said, I want this to be kind of a open yard for parking and stuff. So I don't want to... Um, have our path uh, turn in too early. I want lots of room to get turned around here. And uh, we can swing a little bit wide. That should be all right. Maybe we'll do something like this and take a little bit more of this area. This is all kind of a wasted space on the farm right now. Um, don't see any reason not to take advantage of the space we've got available. And let's see, maybe I can paint underneath my guy. We can. So I'm just gonna widen that just a little bit. I'm gonna bring my brush size down a few so I can Clean up some of these areas. That's looking pretty good. 
Uh, let's see, can I get rid of that grass right there? No, that's all right. And this part's actually pretty good. I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit, have the painting match up a little bit more with where we've ended up driving all this time. And if I look over here, I think I can just do something like this. We're going to end up driving over all that grass anyway. We might as well just make it part of the driveway. I think that looks okay. Not too bad. So now we need to fix all of our problematic, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, auto drive courses. So what I'm going to do is we're going to run over here. And I'm going to grab the pickup truck, I think. Just because it's going to be a little bit more maneuverable and we'll be able to kind of get around and get our course set up the way I want it to be. And then we should be able to test it out with the tractor and stuff. We're going to take this trailer with us and park it over in its designated spot. We've been putting these uh, fifth wheel trailers right here on the back side of this garage and I think I can squeeze this one in there without running into the other trailer just gotta get turned around so I can actually back into the spot there we go let's see how this works out that's uh, pretty good all right here we go we've got both tractors going on the feed again I moved that uh, 4440 up here so that should be making progress. Now this whole building's gonna go away, so at some point I'm gonna have to clean up some of the auto drive courses in these other areas. But for right now, where I'm focused is wanting to see if I can get this all sorted out. So this one that's coming in actually looks pretty good. It's the course that's back underneath the BGA right now that needs to go. So I'm gonna start deleting very carefully and it'll lock on to the nearest point. So if I kind of circle around here and ideally I should have deleted this course before I plopped a building down on top of it. That's my bad. And uh, rather than move this one, I'm going to just finish deleting all of these points because we're going to have a new course that comes around uh, kind of on the outside. And that'll give me a chance to maybe clean up this curve here as well. Um, we'll see. We'll see how this works. Uh, actually, I know I'm going to want to clean that up. So let's just oops, go ahead and get rid of it now. How do I delete a point again? Is it left alt? So right now, this doesn't connect to this at all. What we're gonna wanna do is have one that does something like that, and then similarly have one that does something like, it won't actually curve out that way. I wanna curve this way. I wanna curve in the other way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to curve that way a little bit so that I get some points. And then I'm going to just move them over here. Flat back a little bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I think that should work out for us. So we're only ever coming out on this side of the entire property as far as we planned. So I'm going to pull this over a little bit closer to the BGA here. Pull it a little bit forward and then I'm going to adjust the rest of these as well because we're kind of lopsided here a bit. You do you have to be concerned about coming in from the road and running into this building though? Um, this curve worked out. We did test it. It did work but uh, this is all kind of a mess here. I don't know Eventually, we might need to rework this intersection a bit, but I'm not going to worry about that too much just at the, the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is we're going to come up here and I'm going to start recording and nice and long there. And then we're going to come up and run along the top side of this with the goal of turning here and coming straight into this intersection. Now, I am worried if I'm turning that way to say go to one of those fields, which we are gonna go to that big field quite a bit, 
that we are currently a little bit close to this ditch right here. Like a semi-trailer type thing is going to get hung up on this turn here. So what we're going to do is anticipate that a little bit. And I'm just going to pull all of these nodes over just a little bit. This still needs to turn pretty wide that way, but I think I can simplify this a little bit by doing something like this. Oh, it looks pretty good. We'll give it a shot. If we run into problems, we can always fine tune it later, but that should give us some pretty good angles to get around on the farm here, I think. And uh, really this intersection here is the only part that really worries me at this point, but I think we're gonna have to just give it a go, see what happens. This is also a giant mess over here, but it's been working, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the current philosophy, so I'm just gonna turn those lines off so that it doesn't bother me. And we'll park the pickup right over here and see what we can do to start uh, making, uh, making this all work out. So. First things first, we're going to fire up the uh, original tractor that we got. And I'm going to get this thing moving out in that big field. And I'm kind of wondering if I could have this thing do both fields, is what I'm thinking. But we'll find out. Um, I need to, uh, we need to make a point here, though, for refilling our slurry. And so I'm going to spin this guy into here as if he was coming in on the auto drive course. I'm going to need to go all the way to somewhere like here, I think. Um, let me make it the next point up just for safety purposes like this. And we're going to call this Farm BGA Digestate. Make it nice and clear what we're doing here. So I'm trying to remember which one of these, I think it's this one, right? We're working in a field. In our case, we're gonna go work in field three, and then we wanna pick up our digestate at the farm BGA. So if we go to field three, uh, we're going to turn on the course play uh, thing here, although we don't have our course play course just yet. But we'll get that set up. I'm mostly just watching to see how this is going to work. It's working great for getting around that corner, so I should not have any concerns with that. And then what I want to do is just uh, create a course play course and have this guy start working on this big field here. Now I could put the delta track, the delta track, the uh, quad track out here. The quad track, oh my goodness, everything but what it is, the 9RX. Uh, could come out here. You can tell I've been uh, working with uh, versatile and uh, case equipment there on American farming quite a bit. And uh, I think what we're going to do is run them in separate fields and just get a feel for how that's going to work. So I'm way too zoomed in on this map. We're going to create a course here, our standard uh, three headland course. Go to first waypoint. And because I have this enabled, it should automatically pick things up when it needs to go and refill and to just start handling it. So we're going to let that go and we'll find out if this works really quickly. Uh, which field is this now? That's field four. Do I have a field four? I, I can't see the tracks anyway. I think I've got a field four uh, auto drive uh, destination. That's the other thing this will force me to do is actually get the rest of my auto drive destinations plugged in but this 9rx i'm hoping works just as good as the 9630 is that what is i don't even know what we've got the other john deere four wheel drive we've got over there man you'd think i'd uh, remember what we have uh, around the farm here we've been playing this save long enough let me just check now because it's going to drive me nuts it's a 96 yeah it's a 9630 i think we've got i can't remember how we've configured it but this is going to be the same thing where we're going to need to say that we're working on... We don't have a field for... Okay, so we'll need one of those. 
but then we need to come back to the digestate. We're going to be filling up with digestate. And let's go ahead and open this up. And then we'll just get a field four marker created. Uh, I'm going to do that as a double way mark uh, path here, two directional path like we've done on the other ones. So if I just right click on this, I think that does it. And then we'll just pull right on in here like so. Field four. Create job, course generator, three headlands. Start working on the... Oh, we need a uh, skip row. We skip one row. We start working on the center. I think that's all we had on the other one. Oops, we forgot to actually generate the course though. Three headlands, center, up, down, one skip row, up, down, direction. Should be longest edge. First waypoint. And I need to turn that off. I turn this on. Um, I think I have to turn that on before I start course play. So I'm going to flip that real quick just to make sure. I've got automatic application rates going on. I did put the John Deere sensor thing on the uh, spreader just like we had on the other one. So that should work out for us pretty good. And uh, this guy's going to town. We should be good to go. I don't think we use a whole tank even on this field, so I'm not too worried about it. I do want to jump across the road here, though, and check in on our other worker. Should be coming back up here at some point. I like these nice, bigger fields. Gives them a chance to get some work done. Not spending all time turning around. We got quite a bit of nitrogen on this field because grass doesn't actually take a lot. Uh, so I probably don't even need to spread on this, but once every other time. However, I like to keep it topped off because we might start rotating and putting some corn in these fields uh, instead of grass and kind of shifting things around. Although I've been thinking about how much grass we have and whether or not I want to continue to try and cut grass on all these little fields, we might combine this with that big field over there uh, once we get the is that barley off of that field. I'm not sure. But I'm excited because I think this is all going to work and we're going to have a lot less headaches around the farm because we're going to let these uh, workers just do their things and uh, not have to micromanage refilling them, even if it means that they've got to drive around on the map a little bit more and it'll take longer to do the slurry spreading. I think I'd rather have multiple machines running and have them more or less just do their things and not have to worry about it as much. So that's the plan. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, we're going to keep dumping uh, slurry into this one, and we're going to let this one drain out over time here. Uh, it doesn't have that much longer to go. We've only got about 100,000 gallons of slurry stuck in there right now. So as soon as this comes out, we're just selling all of this off straight up because we're already starting to stack up on the digestate in the uh, new building here, which should work out really good for us. Um, I guess the only thing that would be nice is if I could dump this digestate back into the new BGA so I didn't have to haul it around in this trailer anymore because then I could use this uh, to move slurry out of the tanks on the farm uh, and we don't have to haul digestate around the map anymore. That would be great. Uh, I'm going to go try it. I don't think it's going to work, but, you know, it's worth a shot sometimes. There we go. Coming right through. And... Not so much. I just ain't not accepted. Oh, well, it is what it is. Uh, but we do now have this nice parking area here that I can leave this semi and we'll come back and address that at a later point in time. Hopefully you have enjoyed the episode. We've done a lot of miscellaneous stuff, but we're finally done with the spring planting season and we've got uh, even more automation done on the farm here, which is going to make a lot of the monotonous jobs that we've been spending lots of time on lately go just a little bit faster. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can keep up with all of these cows now that we've got uh, bigger storages and everything is running smoothly. If you enjoyed the episode, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. That's all for today. Ketterk out.